right, so <clears throat> here we are tonight, and we're going to begin with prayer. And then we will have our Bible study. How much explaining should I do? Anyhow, let's begin with prayer. Father, we come to you this evening. We thank you for all that you have done for us. We pray that you'll be with us tonight and help us as we study your word. In your name we pray, amen. All right, so this is, this is a Bible study that's a little bit different um, than what I have done up to this point in, in the recent past. Um, it is a Bible study that's specifically uh, designed to meet the requirements of a class that I'm taking. So it, it also, as I said, is only supposed to be a maximum of 15 minutes, at least the part that I filmed. So uh, this part, is it's very simple, but I hope that it does you good. All right, so uh, take your Bibles. If you wish to follow along, we're turning to Hebrews 12, 14. Um, I've preached this, and I could, I could go for 45 minutes, no problem. But I'm not going to do that tonight. So to, to facilitate the, the brevity of the lesson, we're going to not read the whole passage. We're simply going to look at Hebrews 12, 14. Okay. So yes, now you can begin. So we're going to study Hebrews 12, 14. And I'm going to read it to you um, first. Follow peace with all men in holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. And we're going to we're going to just understand that the without which no man shall see the Lord is a given. Okay, we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about that. We're going to look at that. Follow peace with all men and holiness. Okay. So, the first thing I want to do is treat it as a sentence. So, Jim called this tic-tac-toe, but what I have here, I said I was going to stand up. We're going to diagram a sentence. So, in the sentence, this is follow, all right? And this would be the verb in the predicate. What would the noun, what would the subject be? Do you know? Very good. So it would be an understood you. Okay? And then there's, there's two more words we're going to study tonight that are a part of this sentence. Right? Because it's follow you follow peace and holiness. And those are? What would those be? Yep, you got it. Direct object. All right. So, peace, holiness. Those two words are tied together with a conjunction. Very good. And then we have with all men. What is that? Prepositional phrase. What's the preposition? I'm going to put a W, okay? Men is what? Very good. Very good. Well done, well done. So, can, can everybody see that? that? That's the way it diagrams out. You. What good does this do us that we, that we just went to all that trouble? Well, I think that the... This is where we're going to begin because this we can read that verse and it says follow peace with all men and holiness, right? And, and what we've done is, is brought out that it's actually addressed to you and me, okay? So this sentence, this commandment is addressed to who? It's addressed to you and I, all right? So, this is the subject, this is the verb, this is, I'm sorry, this is the noun, this is the verb, 
And this is the commandment. This is the action required, right? So, we're to follow. Now, <clears throat> in, with your worksheet then, okay? Number one, this is addressed to you and I, okay? And the action required, I told you how to fix that, right? Is that we're to follow. Now, the second thing we're going to do, kind of the second step in the study, is we're going to look at these words carefully. I, in the past, have mentioned Strong's number and don't normally do that in preaching, but I have them tonight. If you want to write them down on your sheet, uh, just put 1377 next to follow. That's the Strong's number. Because that word means to... Here, here's the problem, okay? You are to follow, right? That, that's where we are in this, in this sentence. Well, so, so what does it mean to follow? Um, we, we, see, <laughs> we see a parade around the church Sundays after service, right? Um, and who's in the lead? Nala, right? And you have two other kids, and they are following. And so that's the picture that we get, that we follow. But how do you follow these things? Well, in reality, when you look up that word, it means to pursue. Now, obviously, Nehemiah and, and sometimes Haley are in pursuit, <clears throat> but at the same time, they're simply following along. Um, but this comes from a root meaning to flee. So there's kind of a twofold uh, function of what we're doing when we follow peace and holiness. It's not just that we, we follow along meandering, okay, trying to figure it out, but rather it, it's a more forceful action than that. So it means to flee. So we flee from sinfulness and uncleanness, and we pursue peace and holiness. That, that's all in that word to follow. So, so when you unfold it using in some of the Greek meanings, you begin to see that it's much more activity than just following along. Now, so... There we are. The action required is to follow, but it's also to pursue and to flee. In the past, when I've preached this, I've used, and I don't, Callie and Eric can help me, but Dave Ramsey had an illustration way back when, when, he, when we went through his FPU. Um, and he, had, he said he hunted forever on the internet to find this video of where a gazelle escapes a lion, like a cheetah. That's right, because a cheetah is faster than a lion, huh? So, so that, um, that gazelle was working really hard, getting after it, paying attention, giving all of its energy to running away, okay? Now, number three is we are to follow and the, the next word that comes is peace. Okay, so we are to follow peace. If you look up, and once again I'm going to give you the Strong's number, but we're to follow, we're to pursue, we're to flee from and toward peace. And, and once again the Strong's number is 1515, 1515. Peace means quietness, rest, Set at one again. All right? So I, the, there's, there's two pictures here as we unfold these, these words in the Greek. And as we unfold peace, there's once again two pictures. One is simply quietness and rest. We're to pursue quietness and rest. That, that seems a little bit odd. And yet, it's a beautiful picture. And, and it's just like in real life, probably, uh, at least everyday life. Maybe that's the way I should say it. Everyday life, it, you have to work to find some peace and rest and quietness. 
And so we're to do that. We're to pursue that. But then there's that set at one again. All right? So we're to pursue peace. We're to pursue quietness, rest, and being set at one again with all men. Okay? So number four is all men. And, and I'm going to go past that for a second because when I wrap all this up, we'll, we'll address this some more. Okay? So we're to, to follow peace or to pursue peace with all men. By the way, I, I will just stop and say this. It is kind of a choice. And, and you might say, and it, there's truth to it, that um, we, can't, we can't force people to be to not be angry with us. There's people that, that have misunderstood or choose to misunderstand things and, and they've decided that they might not like me. And, and, and I'm going to say that probably at times most of us have been in that place. But I can be the one who chooses to be not at war with that person. I can be the one who chooses to pursue peace with that person. Okay. All right, so moving on, we are to follow peace with all men and holiness. That Strong's number is 38. Okay, so this is kind of a, a study in Greek. All right, so number five is holiness. <clears throat> Um, so, I, I did a weird thing here. But number six, follow means to pursue. Okay. Now, holiness. I'm going to give you some words that are tied to that Greek word. And, and we'll circle back to number seven. We're to follow... Peace with all men and holiness. Holiness means purification. The state of purity. So, we're actually to give ourselves in our spiritual walk, which our spiritual walk shouldn't be secondary, it should be primary, because it's the most important thing that we can do in our life. So, in that spiritual walk, and, and this is, I'm going to go ahead and say this because there are people who talk about sanctification and, uh, and some people talked about talk sanctifi sorry, sanctification being um, standing, okay, as, or I think I have this right, a standing as opposed to a state, yes. So are they, they're saying that God has made it so that even though we may not be holy people, we're to, we will be holy before God because of Jesus' work. Now, that's not entirely false because of my past life and the things that I've done, there is impurity that is mine and yours. Okay? It's not just me. Um, there's impurity, there's, there's, a, there's unholiness that took place in my life. And that's wiped out because of what Jesus did. And he does bring us up to stand when we're forgiven of our sins and we've come to be regenerated. We've, our, our lives are changed. We're made new. We're made alive in Christ. Our spiritual part of us is dead, but we're now alive. Um, we're, we're placed into a place, we're put into a place of initial sanctification. Okay? But God doesn't stop there. That's when we're to begin to the pursue, to follow, to flee from sinfulness and uncleanness. Every time you read about sanctification in the New Testament, it's tied to leaving sinfulness and uncleanness behind and moving into a life of holiness. Okay? So... Um, Holiness really in this, in this place, in the Greek, means literally sanctification. Okay? And sanctification means 
to be pure, purified, and made holy. So, I'm going to conclude this study by reading to you Hebrews 12.14 in a very, very long form, it turns out. All right? So what it means is that we, that's you and I, are to pursue, that means fleeing from sinfulness and impurity, and we're to flee or pursue after peace, that's quietness, rest, and, and I told you I was going to come back to this rest thing, where we are set at one again with God, with others, and with myself, with all men, and there's that conjunction, holiness, that ties those things together. Holiness, that's purification, the state of purity, sanctification, being made holy, without which no man shall see the Lord. Thank you for your attention to my little Bible study. And you stopped, right? Okay. All right, now I can preach. <laughs> oh my. Well, thank you for listening to that little study that was just a breakdown of that verse and some of you probably have heard that before from me and that's that's correct and um, sanctification does involve two parts and and one one part is to be set apart and the other part is to be cleansed and made pure and w we we make the step of saying, Lord, I want to be set apart for your work, but we can't make ourselves pure. He does that. Yeah. All right, so I, I knew that we could keep it short, so let's finish with prayer. And uh, any prayer requests that you would like to mention? I wouldn't even mind. We can run through some of the ones we mentioned this morning again if we need to. Um, I know that you've been praying for Marcy and Edith and um, Eden's mother and brother-in-law, right? Okay. Um, help me. Okay, yes, Alan's wife passed away. Uh, uh, he lives in Oklahoma City um, and had worked with Eric for a few years. I don't know, a year or two, year and a half. I don't know, however long it was. But he's known him a long time, and uh, the, they aren't that old. And But she had a lot of health issues, and she passed away, so let's pray for Alan. And then... I don't know. Anyone else? All right. D Dave, have you been listening? You got these in your head? Is that, would it be all right if you prayed for us? We need to run through them again? Okay. So... Alan's wife died. Pray for Jenny. Pray for Marcy and Edith. And then Eden's mom has Parkinson's. You know Eden is Jared's wife. Yeah? Okay. And then her brother-in-law has been sick, but he's doing better. I think that pretty well covers it. So what is that, four or five? Yeah, you do what you need to do. Let's pray together, though.
All right. Thank you for your attention. You are dismissed. Have a good week.